Hello everyone. I am Sanket Bandari. I am currently pursuing Masters in Data Science from Columbia University in the city of New York. I am working as a graduate assistant at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. In this lecture, we will cover the evaluation metrics for cl data classification. The lecture will cover uh, what are classification error, then what is cross validation, then we'll cover confusion matrix and move on to cover precision versus recall. Classification errors refer to the difference between the actual levels of data and the levels computed or predicted by a model. The errors are evaluated in different learning phases and for different purposes. During the training phase, a model is learned to minimize the error so that the model can fit the records in the training set the best. This may cause the overfitting issues where the model fits the da training data too well and uh, hence it may be too complex. During the testing phase, the errors committed on the test set are used to evaluate the quality of the model. Once a model is selected and is in use, the errors that are committed on the new records are also called as generalization errors. As the purpose of learning a model is to make prediction to future records or events, the model with the minimal generalization errors is ideal. Now coming to the issue of overfitting. Overfitting can be caused by minimizing the training errors during the training processes. It causes the situation that the learned model fits the training data too well sometimes. It even sometimes it even fits the data perfectly with almost zero training error. This can cause the model too complex to perform well against the re data records outside of the training set, such as the ones in the testing set and other unseen records. This also makes the models sensitive to noise in the data and cannot generalize too well to new data. The overfitting models are more jaggy than the true models as the overfitted ones have more parameters. That is, they tend to be more complex. As we can see in this given example, if we consider the second figure, we can see that ideally the line should, uh, this should fit like shown by the black line, but an overfitted model will try to cover and reach each and every point and in that it will uh, be too complex and it is a zigzag line which doesn't represent anything and this particular line will predict undesired output. Even in the first figure, uh, which is a uh, classification problem where we are segregating blue and red dots. The black line is the ideal line uh, where in some points are misclassified because to reduce the generalization error, but green line re represents the overfitted model, which is too complex to predict any uh, outcome in the real world. Here on the y axis we have error and on the x axis we are increasing the number of nodes in decision trees now uh, this point represent decision tree with four nodes and this particular point represent decision tree with 50 nodes in this example the second tree with 50 nodes has lower training errors but is likely to have overfitting issue the number of node has increased significantly but the training error is decreasing is decreasing too slowly. So therefore, if uh, we have to determine which tree is better, then the answer should be the decision tree with the four node. That is the first tree is better as it doesn't overfit and is less complex as considered to the second tree uh, based on the error rate. Now we will see cross validation. After generating a model from the training set, we use the test set to evaluate how well the model fits the unseen data records. This can help identify overfitting issue or select the best model. Cross validation is a resampling method that selects different portions of the data to train and test a model during each iteration. It is better than doing the training and testing only once in the results of the latter one can be sensitive to how the data is split into training and test sets. So uh, here we can see the example of threefold cross validation. 
Suppose we have uh, S1, S2 and S3 represents uh, 30 data points. So in total we have 90 data points and we are splitting it randomly in 30 th in sets of 30, 30, 30. And in the first run, we will take S1 uh, as the test set and we'll train the model on S2, S3. Then in the second iteration, we will take S2 set as a test set and S1 and S3 will be the training set. And uh, similarly in the third one, the S3 will be the testing set. So this will generalize the model better as compared to only doing one iteration uh, because in this model won't be that sensitive to how the data is split into training and testing set. Here we can see the implementation of cross validation. So we are using sklearn library where we have done the import importing part from sklearn.model selection. We are importing cross validation score and uh, so this code basically performs five fold cross validation where first we are getting the accuracy of each fold then specifying the positive level to compute precision uh, which we'll shortly see so th these are the results of each and every fold and then we are taking mean to get the generalized performance of the model now coming to the confusion matrix confusion matrix defines the performance of a classification model and it is represented as shown here where we uh, where we have predicted classes here and actual classes here by applying a model to the test set we can generate a confusion matrix which is a standard way to summarize the performance of a classification in this table a is the number of data records in the test set where both the true label and the predicted label are yes, that is true positive. B is the number of data records in the test set where the true label is yes, but are mistakenly labeled as no, that is B represents false negatives. C is the number of data records in the test set where the true label is no, but are mistakenly labeled as yes, that is they are false positives and D is the number of data records where both true label and predicted label are known. That is, they are true negative. True in the sense actual label and its predicted label are same, and false in the sense that its actual label and predicted label is not same. That is, it is misclassified. This is the general structure of confusion matrix. This example shows how to use sklearn library to display a confusion confusion matrix first we have will have to import it from sklearn dot matrix then we create its object and pass the actual labels and the predicted labels and it will generate a confusion matrix now based on confusion matrix we have different we have different evaluation matrix the first one is accuracy of the model on the test set a common evaluation it is a common evaluation metric for a classification model uh, this, the, the ratio of number of correctly predicted records to the total number of records is the accuracy of the model so to compute the accuracy from the confusion matrix uh, the number of a and d are summed up as the numerator and it will be divided by the total number of records that is sum of all the four numbers in the matrix that is a plus b plus c plus d as you can see here so it is true positive plus true negative divided by true positive plus true negative plus false positive plus false negative issue of using accuracy as an evaluation matrix in classification problem the issue arises when there is an imbalance in the data set that is suppose the data set has two classes and it predicts whether an email is a spam or not so suppose there are 99 percent of the uh, data set contains uh, non-spam or normal emails and one percent uh, contain spam emails so even if a model which predicts every email as a normal email 
get uh, will get an uh, accuracy of 99% as the data contains 99% of normal emails so this is a fundamental problem of using accuracy so uh, based on accuracy we can say the model has 99% of accuracy but in reality it is performing very poor the alternative metrics or measures for evaluating the performance of a model of a classification problem where the data set is imbalanced are precision, the recall and F major or F score or F1 score. So basically the precision is the ratio of true positive, that is A, to true positive plus false negative. That is the precision is calculated by dividing the true positives by anything that was predicted as positive. And recall is calculated by dividing the true positives by anything that should have been predicted as positive. So for recall, the formula is true positives divided by true positives plus false negative. In classification problem, we need to sp specify what is the true label. So in case of uh, spam email detection, let's say that the true label is uh, when the email is spam. Then the precision is the percentage of emails labeled as spam that are actually spam. And recall is the percentage of spam emails that are labeled as spam. That is how many were we successfully able to recall out of the actual spam. So you can think of precision as out of the samples that you predicted as positive, how many are true positive that is precision deals with the prediction and uh, in case of recall of the samples that were actually true how many of them were you able to get as true when you predicted so precision basically calculates how precise you were when calling a sample one or zero and recall calculates like how much you were able to recall your positive samples. So I know this terminology is a bit confusing, but uh, if you remember it in simple terms, then it will be pretty easy to remember. Now, as discussed earlier, these are the formulae for precision and recall. Uh, precision is based on the formula. You can see precision is sensitive to false positives and recall is sensitive to false negatives so we can select a model based on how much we can afford false positive or false negatives here we have taken an example like which one is more affordable false positive or false negative so it differs from case to case so in the case of detecting whether an apple is poison or not or apple content is poison or not we need high recall then uh, to while choosing the stocks to invert, we will need high precision. This is the basic implementation of precision recall and F1 score in scikit-learn library, where uh, we will import uh, from sklearn.metrics. We will be using precision score, recall score, and F1 score, where we will pass Y test, that is test labels, and the predicted values.